Tuesday marked the official start of the first session of Zimbabwe's 10th parliament. President Emerson Umingagwa urged lawmakers to finish all pending legislation, including the contentious private voluntary organization PBO bill. Civil society organizations have criticized the measure, arguing that it restricts the rights to free speech and association and gives the government unjustified influence over how they operate. The bill permits the state to meddle with the operations and governance of civil society organizations. Heavy fines and incarceration are among the punishments for breaking the bill's rules. I challenge you to expedite the resolution of the pending issues from the 9th Parliament's legislative agenda. A lot of work remains. The first session of this Parliament must see the completion of the Mines and Minerals Bill. The Medical Services Amendment Bill, the Insurance Bill, and the Private Voluntary Organization PBO Bill, which were outstanding from the 9th Parliament. Stated President Umningagwa, since the two-thirds majority was no longer held by ZANU-PF in the 9th Parliament, Umningagwa submitted the bill back to that body for reconsideration. According to President Umningagwa, the repeals of laws general amendment bills should remove outdated laws such as the Frederick Clayton Trust Act, the Service of Documents Act, the Circles Estates Leasing Act, and the War Marriages Validation Act. The Administration of Estates Amendment Bill and the People with Disabilities Bill are two new legislation that will make up the first session's activity. The Legal Practitioners Amendment Bill 2023 is another law that aims to simplify the registration procedure for international legal professionals. The Inheritance and Succession Law's General Amendment Bill 2023, which aims to harmonize inheritance and succession laws with the Constitution and global best practice will also be on the legislative agenda. The president also emphasized the need for the Water Act, the Zimbabwe National Authority Water Act, and the Plant Breeders Act to be reviewed by the 10th Parliament. The eagerly awaited Climate Change Bill, which aims to control greenhouse gas emissions and promote low-carbon development technologies, should be vigorously debated in order to enhance the necessary institutions and financing sources. A Human Wildlife Conflict Relief Fund is being established to provide financial aid to those affected by human wildlife conflict in our communities while the Parks and Wildlife Act is being modified. He encouraged Parliament to take into account hastening the review of the bills that would amend technical regulations, economic empowerment, standards, and competition law. Ratification is also necessary for the SADC Industry Protocol and the Inter-African Coffee Accord. By enacting the Electronic Commerce Bill, which regulates electronic transactions, Parliament will help create a framework that supports transparent, easy-to-use, accountable, and sustainable online transactions. Imningagwa insisted that the law's unfinished Postal and Telecommunications Amendment Bill be finished. Parliament is anticipated to take into account the alignment of the Housing Standards Control Act and the Housing Building Act in terms of housing provision. Also, he directed the Minister of Public Service to deliver the National Productivity Institute law. For the House's consideration are three bills, the Human Resources Practitioners Bill, the Pensions and Amendment Bill, and the Occupational Safety and Amendment Bill. In order to support the mainstreaming of youth in socio-political and economic spheres and the maintenance of vocational training institutes as hubs, the National Youth Law is also being worked on for consideration. Specifically, National Heroes, Liberation War Heroes, and Liberation Heroes will all be redefined under the National Heroes Act. The Chidiazuka Commission of Investigation Report's recommendations will now be included into changes to the War Victims' Compensation Act. <laughs>